All right, so we're here live at NAMM 2020. We're at the La Freak booth here with the Everything Saxophone podcast. This is such an interesting product. I was a little bit skeptical first, folks, but so many people came up to me. I tried it out. It's really interesting. So we're here with Hans to explain what his product is. Okay, thank you for having us. Um, we have a product for all the woodwinds and the brass winds, but I'm a saxophone player and I invented that first for the saxophone. I had to play a piece with all really high altissimo notes and a lot of fun stuff in it together with around 20 mallet players. So and it was all tuned percussion and we all know as saxophone players that the overtones, if you play the altissimo, it's always tricky to get it really in tune and to get it stable. So I tried to play the piece for the first time with the, with the band that I had to play it with and I was not satisfied at all about tuning of the altissimo. It was really hard to get it in tune with the flat mallets and that's what yeah, gave me a little problem. I needed to practice more, I thought, and then I practiced much more and I've tried out new fingerings to get it all in tune. Nothing worked. So then I blamed my saxophone. And I talked, I, I just said, okay, if my saxophone is a physical project, maybe I can borrow your neck, it's laying here. Yeah. Maybe that's easier to explain. We have a saxophone and we make our tone at the mouthpiece and the reed. And our tone is an energy, and the energy is fundamental in overtones. If they travel in the material of the instrument, so in the tube, they travel a path, and as long as they can stay in a one uninterrupted tube, they travel at the same speed. But as soon as they hit this clamping connection here, the cork and the mouthpiece, they slow down. And the resistance that causes the slowing down is a frequency dependent resistance. So you have lower frequencies that go easier to this connection than the higher frequencies, they go sl slower. So if your fundamental slows down with 1%, your first overtone slows down with 2%, 3 4 5 So all the overtones get a little bit shorter, and then shorter wavelengths are sharper tones. So that's the reason why I thought, okay, this cannot be true, this cannot be good. So I need to bypass the, the clamping connection of my saxophone. So I made a very clumsy bypass first and I put it on and I was like, wow, it's in tune now. So that was the reason to make this product. It's a sound bridge, it's called Le Freak, from the frequencies that we pass on from one to the other part. And it's actually solving a lot of problems on our instruments. It's more in tune, a lot of things that we normally correct, like C-sharps and all those things, you can just play it with by, by your voicing and just get it where you want and not where the saxophone wants it to be. So it's really a cool thing to try and to check out and it makes playing easier, it makes the tones more in tune. So we have a small picture, I don't know if you can see it, but on the wall we have like a tuner with a trumpet. So the Le Freak trumpet is the only one that is stable in tune and the other ones, the other ones go everywhere. So, and we have also a benefit that we get a surround sound. So normally our saxophone is like a torchlight, but if you put it on, it's a surround sound instrument. So I can attest to that, folks. That's, that's what happened to me. I was in shock. Yeah, and that's, that's, I think, a very cool thing. And I hope I, my voice is a little, we had a little party yesterday, <laughs> but I hope I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> So I sing the first overtone of the tube. And if I extend the tube a little bit, you lose the projection and the, the spreading surround sound effect of the tube. And what we do as players, if our tone is too sharp, we say, okay, we are a little too sharp, we pull out. So we make our tube actually longer than the tube should be. And the, the little bit too sharp part of our tone is caused by this clamping connection. So if you use a Le Freak, it's more in tune, you don't have to pull out so much, and the whole instrument starts to resonate. So you get a more surround sound, more in tune. It actually is more responsive, so it's actually much more faster if you play staccato and all those things. And you take a lot of the reflection away also. That's the second thing. It's not only about tuning, but that was the problem for me, the tuning. 
But if you have here, if you hit a clamping connection, your tone cannot go in the instrument for 100%. A lot of your tone is bouncing back. And if your tone is bouncing back, you feel a negative resistance. And that's for all the frequencies that you play, for all the tones, is that actually different. It can be in phase, and then you're helped by the bouncing back. It can be out of phase, and it kills your tone. So that's why if you play a chromatic scale, our saxophone always is uneven. One sound is open, next half tone higher, and we have a closed sound. And this really makes it so even. So I hope you are interested in trying our product. It's really cool, and we, yeah, we're we get you. a nice demonstration, I guess. Yes, can we do one more thing? Can you take the my mouthpiece cap off, and can you yes. show people close up how this connects? Yeah. So for the saxophone, we can do two things. We can make it connect from the mouthpiece to the neck, to the vocal. But actually, if you take one longer version, you can touch the reed and directly to the vocal. And then the effect is even bigger. So it's not always possible because corks can be a little long, but it's easy to take a little bit away of your cork and then you can all benefit of the direct connection of the reed. What about the rubber band though? Like you said, it's very important for the placement of that to not touch Yeah, the we, we have the rubber bands in two, in two different forms. This is our standard band. But if you put this on, the rubber band is even touching the, the tube of the instrument and it's touching the Lefreaks. So actually we made it that we have some tubes. It's not on correctly, but this one needs to be a little higher. So we have the small beads on to make the elastic band free from the Lefreaks or free from the instrument. So the dampening part of the elastic bands is also gone. And we already try to um, be sure that the underplate is free to vibrate because we have two plates, one without dots. This is actually the bridge that does the job. This one is like a copy of the underbridge but with four dots on. This goes on top and if I now touch the upper plate, I won't dampen the underplate. So it's really a very easy way of connecting with an elastic band and the underplate is very free to resonate. Yeah, I see a little space in between. Yeah, right? there's yeah, a little okay. space in between. Got it. Okay. And it's for very small surfaces that touch the underplate. Got it. So it's much more resonant if you put it on with two plates. And that's actually a little bit of our secret that it works so well. Awesome. All right. So now I think we're going to be ready for a demonstration of a before and after. Here's Rajiv Halim. He's been at the Keeley's booth and he's an awesome artist from Chicago. So he's got his alto here. We're going to have him go into the booth right now and we're just going to do a little bit of a before right, and come. after. <laughs> Maybe let's do Stand something by. really, really, you know, basic, like like he was saying, a chromatic scale, sure. you know? I want to do two things, one on the mouthpiece and then again one on the reed. He is playing on a sterling silver neck, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I chose a material that fits the neck very well, and it's also a sterling silver Le Freak. Got it, okay. register that you I think for the podcast viewers is most notable because the higher register from the palm keys up is always pretty sharp so now I will put one on and it's just a very easy thing to get it on if you practice a little bit it's on in like a less than a minute so it's on and I put it on this side of the instrument because here we don't have too much keys on so it's the more free side of the instrument. So if I connect it on this side, I get a free way for the tone. Here is no keys, here not. If I put it on this side, we have a lot of dampening parts, so it will take a little bit away of the effect. That's interesting, on mine you had it on the bottom part. Yeah, and on the bottom part it's also pre pretty free, but then I can go to actually one tube earlier. Our reed is the first moving part. Got it. And then okay. I'm actually a little better, mm. but first on the mouthpiece.
well. I heard a difference. You, yeah. you felt and heard it, it, right? Yeah. 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 Now I try to get it. It's always a little bit tricky if the cork is long, but I guess I, I managed to get it on. Yes, it's there already. So now, now it's connected to the reed. Maybe you can yeah, let's just see, see it. Okay, so okay. it touches the reed directly to the neck. Okay, and you uh, talk a little bit before he plays about the importance of, um, I'll say, avoiding the cork. Avoiding the cork. My first trigger that there was something wrong with my saxophone was that I thought, okay, my mouthpiece is a very hard material, and in hard materials, the tone is traveling very fast. But in cork material, it, the tone is traveling with 70 meters per second. And if you make it clamping, it's even slower. So you go from more than 3,000 meters per second to 70 and back to more than 3,000 in the silver again. So that was for me the trigger. I thought, okay, I have to bypass this part so that it's easier for the tone to go just to the next part. So that's actually what we do here. Times two. I don't. Do you have a? You have a leak in your low B flat or something? There's like a little bit of a wobble down there. Yeah. You, and did you notice that that that's it taking? Kind of diminished it. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit. Now, now, folks, that doesn't mean that you you know you buy this and your leaks are gonna go away. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But okay. But but you noticed that it did it did help. I noticed that. It's much more stable before. if the instrument is, has a little leak. It's much more stable if you yeah. put it on. Yeah. Definitely. Can we and, try one more time without? Just yeah. Sure. Show again. Yeah. Of course. I don't know about you, um, but what I'm hearing from this end, first of all, you've got a beautiful tone, by the way, um, but you know, you hear the in, out, in, out, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's muffled, it's not a lot, but it's just, it's noticeable, mm -hmm. muffled, free, muffled, yeah. free, and before with the, the freak on, I didn't hear that, it was right. more even. It, it's a thing we get used to. First, I thought, okay, I, 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 let, I showed it to a lot of players, and the strange thing in the beginning was that the more professional the player, the less first they heard it. And I think just that we get used to the out of tune and the imperfections of our instrument because we practice so much. If we are professional, we, we play four, five, six hours a day. And if you hear a thing six hours a day, it, it gets normal in your ears. You adjust for it too. And yeah, you adjust. And but. The strange thing is that they're in the musical world, it's always like the trumpet player says that the saxophone is not in tune. The saxophone player says that the trumpet player is not in tune. And then we say, oh, the clarinets, they are the most worst. And, and the flute player says, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And it's always a little bit like this. And we do clinics for wind bands. And if we do the sections of a wind band and we let them play for each other, they all, the other instruments, they say the loudest, like, wow, now the clarinets are in tune. And we say, okay. And the clarinets were like, okay, I don't know if it works. But if they hear the trumpets use it, and they say, okay, please get it on again, because if you take it off, it's, it's out of tune. So it's just our way of getting used to what was the tuning reference before the product and now. I just think we can go to a next level. Now tell us where can people find you? Where can they purchase this? Um, is there a way? Are there dealers in the U.S. or you know where yes. they are where they can try? We have a website, so it's W. I can put it 
in the screen. So, yep. yes, this is our website. And on our website, we have resellers. And you can go to the USA and you find all our resellers in the USA. And if you cannot find one in your neighborhood, you can always send us an email and you can also buy directly to our website. But we try to encourage to go to our local dealers here. But yeah, they help us a lot selling the product. So we want to have them also to sell it for us. Yeah, and also, you know, you were very helpful for me and both Rajiv as well in terms of determining which plates were best for yep. our instrument and placement and all that kind of thing. So folks, definitely try to go to a dealer, you know, check out their website, www.lafreak.com. And Hans and company, I, I wanted to thank you guys so much. You've been so helpful, and this has been really informative. I think it's a great product. And you told me that uh, some special is going to be happening in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, in a little bit we get an award of best product of NAMM show for school bands and orchestra. So we are really happy with that award. Congratulations on, on your achievements, and thank you thank so you. much for everything. Thank you so much for coming. And thanks, Rajiv. Of course. Thank you for, tra for helping yes, this sir. thing. Thank you.